everybody. Hello, um, it's great to see all of you here. Uh, my name is Emily Van Hoff. I am an artist and designer in Chicago. Um, and I've been teaching these classes um, in partnership with Michaels and Fiskars uh, this year. And today's class are these fun um, star shaped pillows. Um, I will be keeping an eye on the chat as we go. So if you have any questions, you can throw those in the chat. Um, we also have Tia here, who's a representative from Fiskars, and she can answer any questions um, specifically about the tools that I'm using. Um, and she also has a link to my blog post um, that she'll post in the chat. Um, that blog post has the pattern piece um, that you will need to make this project. Um, and it also has written instructions in case you forget any of the steps um, and you need to refer back to it. And then as soon as the recording of this class is available, um, I will make sure to link it in that blog post as well. Um, so everything you need should be in there. Um, I think that's everything we need um, to get started. Uh, let's see. The let's switch to the overhead view. Um, this is the pattern piece. Uh, that's on the blog post that we'll be using. Um, so you can print that out. Um, if you print it at 100% scale, um, the size of pillow that it will make is this one, which is about like, that's about like 18 inches from the widest point to the widest point. But if you wanna make a different size, um, you can just kind of scale it down or up um, depending on uh, what you're going for. Um, you just kind of experiment a little bit to figure out what the best size is for what you have in mind. Um, so we will be cutting 24 of these. Obviously, you've got lots of options as far as color goes. I used all of the colors in this guy. Um, the one I'm going to be making today is just going to be a solid purple one. Um, to match my orange couch, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, and if you're using all of the colors, um, just kind of pay attention to sort of how many you want of each color um, and how you want to kind of distribute those colors throughout your pillow, um, which we will get to uh, after we cut everything out. So obviously, first step is to cut out the pattern piece, which I have already done. And then we're gonna cut out um, 24 of these triangles. So I'm gonna line up my piece of fabric on my grid here. Um, I've already made this edge straight. Um, and then we're gonna cut just a little bit wider um, than, let's see, just a little bit wider than the actual point of the triangle here. Uh, cut that into a long strip. And then we're going to cut out each triangle individually. And I am using, um, I'm using the ruler and rotary cutter instead of a scissors here um, because you can. Um, like once you lay your pattern piece down and put your ruler on top of it, it's going to kind of hold everything in place. Um, and you can do a bunch of layers at the same time. I'm doing two layers right now. But this morning I was cutting like six layers at once and it worked just fine. Um, so the rotary cutter is going to be your friend for, for cutting these out. So I'm just laying my pattern piece along the edges here. And cutting along the edges to get the triangles. And then this is um, the angle is sized correctly so that you should be able to just kind of, you know, flip the pattern piece 
every other direction all the way down your strip and it will fit neatly here into the corners. And again, you can stack these up, do more than one at a time. It will make your life go a lot quicker. All right, so that is the basic idea. I'll keep going until you have 24. I've already cut some of them out, so you don't have to watch me do all of them. Let me get those out of the way. All right, so once we get everything cut out, we are going to assemble um, each of the points separately. And each point is made out of three triangles. So again, if you're using different colors, um, kind of distribute the colors amongst the points um, as you would like. And then we will start sewing them together. We're gonna sew them along each of the long edges. Um, and uh, the trick to make the end of this project go easier is to start our seam not like right at the end of our fabric, but just a little bit in from the end. So we're going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance. And if you can kind of imagine if we've got a quarter inch seam allowance coming up this way, and then a quarter inch going along this edge, we're going to start our seam like right where those two seams would meet. Um, so you can kind of just visualize it. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, you just want to start a little bit in from the end. And then we're going to do the same thing down here on this corner. Um, so it will end uh, just a little bit shy of the point on both ends. Um, so I will pull my sewing machine in and then show you what that looks like once it's actually sewn. Make sure your edges are lined up neatly. All right, we look at our seam here from the top view. You might switch them back. There we go. Um, you can see I've started just a little bit away from the edge on both of those corners. Um, someone's looking for the template. That will be at the blog post, which is linked um, up at the top of the thread. Um, the other important thing to note about these seams is that I'm back tacking at the front and at the end. Um, and you want to be especially sure that you're back tacking um, along um, the point that connects to the short edge, because uh, a lot of uh, stress is going to be put on these seams. So I'm back tacking on, let's see, let me get this in here. Um, I'm back tacking on this end like a couple of times just to really reinforce that. Um, so once you've done one seam, we're going to open that up. And if you have 
a print or something, all of these should be right sides together. All right, so I've opened it up. The nice side of the seam, the right side of the seam should be facing up. We will lay the third piece down along one of those long edges. And then so along that seam, again, starting and stopping just a little bit from the ends. Back tacking, going over it just like a couple times to make sure that's good and straight. All right, so now we've got three pieces connected and we're gonna connect the remaining long edges together. So fold the whole thing in half. Um, make sure that the top of the point um, is sort of Folding away from that edge so you don't catch any of the any of that piece um, in this next seam. Line those edges up. You can certainly pin um, if that is helpful, or you can just tap hold it in place. And back tapping at the end. So now we have one finished point. It's looking beautiful. We're going to do, um, we are going to do 20 or use all 24 of our pieces, which will make for eight points. Um, all of them, we're going to do the same except for one, we need to leave um, a section open so that we can turn it inside out through there. So I'm going to show you that one as well. The first seams are going to be exactly the same as the last point um, that we did. So I will sew that quickly. All right, so there's the first seam going to be the same. The next seam will also be the same. Line those up, back tack at each end. All right, so we have the three pieces um, sewn together. And then we will sew the remaining two edges. All right, so this is the last, the last edge that we have to do on this point. Um, and this is the seam that we're gonna leave a section open so that we can turn it inside out um, through that section and we'll also be stuffing it um, through this section. So I'm gonna sew a couple inches at the top and then a couple inches at the bottom and leave this middle chunk open. Um, you wanna make sure it's big enough that you can like fit your hand in because um, that's again what we'll be using to stuff it. Um, so I will 
Let me do that real quick and show you what that looks like. All right, so this is, um, yeah, we've got that little chunk in the middle there that we're leaving open. Um, and we're only gonna do that on one of the points, the rest of the points and we will, so um, the same as the first one. Um, I'm not gonna make you watch me sew all of the points, so I already have a couple of them done. Um, so once you've assembled all the points, we're gonna attach them together. Um, there will be, let's see, if we look at this guy. Yes, I did back tack next to the uh, stuffing hole as well. All right, so if we look at this guy, we've got four points that are all meeting in one center point. Um, so we're gonna assemble four of the points together in one section, and then the other four points um, we will sew together as well, and then we will attach them sort of all along the center seam last. So to attach a group of four together, bring this down. We're gonna be sewing these short edges together. Um, so line two of them up. Make sure the uh, other sides are kind of folding out so that we don't catch those in this seam. Make sure you're doing that on both sides. Um, and then Let's see. So you can see I've ended just shy um, of the point here. And we're going to do the same thing again for this seam. So we've got a quarter inch seam allowance, and you're going to start um, just a little bit in from the edge, basically where you've ended um, this last line of stitching. Um, so we're going to sort of sew from stitching line to stitching line here with a quarter inch seam allowance. And again, if pinning makes this part easier for you, go ahead and do that. And make sure you're back tacking these ones as well. Yeah, someone said it looks like fabric origami. I really love modular star origami, and that's definitely where this idea came from. Um, okay, so we've got the two pieces attached together here. We're going to sew a third piece um, along one of these seams here. Exactly the same way as we did the last one. We've got a little bit um, more to make sure you're holding out of the way. Uh, make sure everything is kind of like folded back away from this seam. We'll sew a quarter inch along here. Thank you. 
Now we've got three points all coming together at like one central spot. I'm gonna take the last one here and add it in so that we'll have four all coming together at the center. So same basic idea, short sides together. Line up the points, make sure everything else is folding away from that seam. And we'll do a quarter inch seam allowance there. All right, so now I've got the four of them all connected and we just have this one uh, seam left to connect the first one to that last one. Um, the fabric that I'm using is quilting cotton. Um, it's from Michaels. I think it's their like premium line. Um, I think any quilting cotton would work really nicely. But yes, um, a stretchy fabric would definitely make it a little bit more difficult. Okay, this is all four points sewn together. So that is one half fully assembled. I have another half fully assembled here. Um, so if we lay this so that the sort of remaining raw edges are facing up, you can see we've got like uh, basically a square of edges that haven't been sewn to anything yet. And then on this second one, if I can make that sit the right way. We've also got a square of edges that has not been sewn yet on the other half. So we are going to sew those two pieces together. Um, again, everything at this point should still be right sides together. So don't turn anything inside out yet. Um, we are going to connect um, each of these points over to the matching point and then stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around it. Um, I'm gonna grab some pins for this, this part. So I'll flip this one over on top of this guy.
Um, it doesn't matter where your turning hole is. It will just be in one of the points. It doesn't matter which one or where it's located as long as it exists, um, you'll be able to turn it inside out. All right, I think I'm gonna go uh, just sort of one section at a time. So I've got my first section pinned together point to point. Um, it should feel basically the same as the other short edges that we've sewn together. We'll do it exactly the same way. Just be careful that you're not sewing any seams into that seam that you don't want to be. Make sure everything's folded away from that spot. Make sure you're back tacking. These seams will get a lot of pressure on them once they're stuck. All right, so we have one of those. I'm just going to kind of rotate it, pick the next two short edges here. So those together the same way. At this point, it should be pretty obvious which seams need to get sewn together. We've got sort of this one square left open, so we'll attach the opposite points to each other. Uh, let's see. Like so. So one of those. Have you ever done, uh, someone is asking if I've ever done a sphere shape. I have not. 
Um, you could do, so these triangles are like pretty long and skinny. You could do essentially the same thing, but with triangle, um, that's like more of like an equal, uh, an equilateral triangle, I guess. And that will end up being much closer to a sphere, although not exactly a sphere. But you can play with the, um, the shapes of the triangles and that will give you a different finished shape as well if you're feeling like being very experimental. As long as it's an isosceles triangle, I think that's the right word, where two of the edges are the same length. All right, so our last opening, we're gonna sew that one closed. So all of these edges, except for your turning hole, should be sewn closed at this point. Um, so the next step is going to be to find that seam that has the hole in it. And we're going to turn it inside out. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that you are getting each point um, to look pointy. Let's see. Kind of turn the whole thing inside out first, and then you can really go in and uh, poke out each of the points. Get any loose strings, you can trim those off. I don't know where this one's coming from. Tia uh, mentioned my cutting mat. The nice thing about this one is that it folds up. Mm, it's stuck under my computer, so I can't fold it. But it folds in thirds, which makes it easy to travel with, which is convenient. Also makes it easy to store if you don't uh, just have a space to have your cutting mat sitting out all the time. And I like a very big cutting mat. The bigger, the better. This one is 24 inches by 36. I think. All right, okay, so we got all of the points turned inside out, and then obviously the next step is to step it. Where am I stepping? I lost my, lost my hole. There we go. Oh my goodness, where did it go? 
magically closed up right here. Okay. Um, and when you stuff it, you also kind of need to like focus on each point individually because you want to make sure you're getting stuffing all the way down, all the way down in there. <laughs> a permanent sewing space is a very nice thing to have. I'll leave you that. Starting, starting to actually look like something here. Now the space that I'm in right now used to be my bedroom and I moved my bed into a less beautiful spot so that my sewing room can have a more beautiful spot. And it has been very wonderful. When I was, when I first started making quilts, I was just working on the floor and that was, that was not ideal. Having a spot to actually stand up and work is amazing. All right. There's nothing wrong with the floor dweller life until you can until you can move up. It definitely works when you need it to. Although it's not great for your back, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, this part is kind of takes a while. You want to kind of pay attention um, to sort of how densely you're stuffing each section, make sure that it's just consistent throughout. But we're definitely starting to look like something here, so. I have um, like a burnt orange velvet couch. I'm very excited to have this purple pillow to go on it. I think it's gonna be a good pairing. All right, so at this point you can see these center spots here definitely are getting um, like quite a bit of pressure and that's why it's important to back tack on those spots otherwise you might end up getting a hole. Um, Megan is asking about stuffing uh, using sort of fabric scraps instead of polyfill. Um, that's a very good thought. I wonder if you used polyfill, like sort of like in the points, 
and then used fabric scraps in the center, kind of do a mix of both that might um, that combination might work. Oh, look at that. Um, polyfill stuff into I thought it was a straw. I didn't know that came in here. Um, Emily's asking about making it with a thicker material like an upholstery velvet. I have not tried it, but I would, I can't imagine why it wouldn't work. I think that would be very fun. Um, I've also thought about doing one in like a sort of like a, like that Sherpa-y kind of fleecy fabric. Would you like to see the tool? Sure, Let's see what it is. I think it's just like a chopstick. Yep, and it's just like a little piece of bamboo something. So I guess you'd use that to help you stuff the points if you wanted. I really thought that someone just like got a straw stuck in here while they were assembling it in the factory. It is not that. Great, I'm getting very close. This is probably not the most exciting thing in the world to watch. Um, if you want to get like uh, very intense with your star pillow making, you can also, there's a version of this that you make exactly the same, but it has 20 points instead of eight points. And to do that, you would just um, have five pieces that come together. And then you do, I guess that would be four sections of five pieces each. I have made those. They're very cool. They also take a long time, um, but they are very cool. I made a little one of those for my nephew one time. And if you're making them um, as a toy for a baby, another thing you can do um, is attach um, like, a, like a ribbon loop. They have those little um, blankets they make with little ribbon loops all around the edge. And those are cute to put in the points as well. Okay, let's see. So once you've gotten it mostly, mostly stuffed, kind of like check all the points, make sure they're feeling the same amount of full. Gonna move some stuffing around if you need to. I think we're feeling pretty good here. Oh, a button where all the pieces come together would be, that would be cute and that would help probably um, reinforce that spot as well. Okay. All right, we're gonna call this good. So the last thing that we need to do is sew our opening closed. Um, and I'm just gonna do that by hand. I think this is, would be a little too difficult to fit on a sewing machine at this point. Um, so grab a length of thread. Thread your needle. I'm gonna use um, a double thickness of thread just cause there's and a lot of pressure on that spot and tie a knot at the end. Okay, and then to sew this closed, I'm just gonna do a whip stitch um, all along the end. Make sure um, the edges are sort of tucked tucked to the inside. And then using 
matching thread so it's a little bit less visible. Let's see if I can get this a little closer. I'm just kind of wrapping the thread around, catching um, just a little bit of fabric. This is going to be a bit of a visible stitch, but if you use the same color thread and keep it neat, um, you really don't notice it terribly much. Keeping my stitches pretty close together. Oops. No. Let's see if I can get this like a little closer here. So I've got my raw edges tucked in, and I'm just doing like a bit of a whip stitch around here. Yes, the recording will be available on YouTube and I will link it from um, my blog post as well. Okay, I'm getting close to the end here. Does anyone have any questions um, while I finish this up? Depending on fabric direction. Um, do you mean like the grain of the fabric, like the stretchy direction of the fabric? Um, if you're using a quilting cotton, I don't think it really matters that much because that's not a stretchy fabric. So I don't really think you need to worry about the grain terribly much. Um, and I would definitely recommend a fabric that isn't stretchy. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure if like the grain, like whether you're cutting it on the grain or not, I'm not sure if that really matters all that much. If that's, that's the question you're asking. Oh, a quilt cotton with a print on it. Um, I mean, if you wanna make sure your, like if your print has kind of like an up and a down to it, um, I guess, I mean, I think that's a personal preference, but I feel like maybe it would make sense if the up was like towards one of the points. Probably depends on the print as well a little bit, but. Um, yeah, if you want it to always be facing in the same direction, then just kind of. Yeah, if you got a print, I guess, sort of you can fussy cut a little bit and figure out where you want the images to be in what direction. All right, so I got to the end um, to, um, I tied a knot and I didn't explain it. But you'll just do a couple of loops and put your thread back through to tie a knot at the end. Again, you can see that seam a little bit, but it's not, it's really not terribly obvious once it's on, on the whole pillow. Um, yeah, so that is the finished 
the finished thing. That's pretty fun. I like it in a solid color. Got that one and this one to the brands. Um, do you want to switch back to the top view? Um, that's everything for today. If you have a, um, if you have any questions, you can still throw those in. I'm going to grab the project for next month. Click. Um, next month, we're going to make banners that have words on them. You can choose whatever quote you would like to use. We're going to sew the banner and um, cut out the letters. It's like a sticky felt. Um, have some cute grommets in the corners. And there you are. Um, my mom wants to see it on the couch, but the rest of my house is a disaster when I'm not not showing that to you. So if you want to see it on the couch, I will post one on my Instagram later. My Instagram is at Emily Van Hoff. Um, if, uh, if you're not following me already. Um, let's see, Tia posted a link to a sign up for the next class. And I'm not seeing any more questions. Um, so definitely come hang out with us next month, sign up. Um, and thanks so much uh, for coming today. It was nice to have everybody here um, and I will see you next month. Have a good night.